This is the new Xtool F1 Ultra, which is a massive upgrade over the original F1. As you can see with them side by side, there's a bit of a size difference. But let's back up for a second and actually unpack this thing. And it even has printed instructions on the box itself showing you how to unpack it. And you can see that it is well packed and it's not the lightest thing in the world, so keep that in mind. And here it is out of the box, but we still need to remove some tape on the side. And this has to be removed so we can actually open up the machine. And with that gone from both sides, this will just slide right up. And not only is this packed with more foam, there's also more parts for the laser inside of it. Like this, the new touchscreen controller. Getting the foam out of the laser is a little hard because it's in here pretty tight, but with a bit of wiggling it does come out. And this top bit of foam has another box inside of it with more stuff. And on top of that, there's one more box that was packed alongside of the laser itself. So let's get this all set up and here's the back of the laser. And you can see right in the middle is an exhaust port, along with a few ports to plug into. And one of the things you have to have plugged in in order to use the laser is this little USB key. Which also means if you don't want anyone else using this laser, you can just take this out. And here's a better look at the touchscreen controller, which also has a few physical buttons. And it plugs into this port here, which also screws in place. This also comes with a much bigger power supply compared to the original F1, with an output of 24 volts and about 10 and a half amps. And this also just plugs into the back. And to deal with all the smoke you're going to be making, this did come with some exhaust tubing. And one end of it just kind of plugs into the back of the laser. And it just kind of pressure fits in place so there's no tools required. And then you could run this ducting outside. I'm going to be plugging it into my shop ducting. That also has a few inline fans to help get everything out. But if you're not able to have a setup like this, Xtool does have an option, which is this smoke purifier. You can also set this up with pretty much any laser you like as well. And this will pretty much filter all of your exhaust, seeing that most of this purifying system is a filter with its own built-in fan. So this comes in really handy if you don't have a way of getting rid of your exhaust or if you're at an event. And on the side of the purifier, there is a port that you can still hook up more exhaust ducting if you want to. But anyways, back to the laser. It does have an emergency shutoff on the side that you need to make sure is not pushed down. And then there's a single button to turn the machine on. And this particular F1 Ultra unit is a beta or pre-production model. So you might see some things that are different from the retail units, but for the most part, everything should work exactly the same. And with this being the first time I powered it on, it does need to update. And this took a few minutes, so let's skip that real quick. And here's our main screen. And as you can see, there's not really much going on here, and it has no files preloaded onto it. But the screen itself is very responsive. It does have some physical buttons going around the side and bottom, and these arrow keys will move up and down the laser, so you can adjust it to have the proper focus. When it comes to the laser itself, it has a cap on it out of the box, and you can see it's using a pretty large lens. And with that removed, you can see a red and blue dot now. And you pretty much use these to focus them to the object you're going to be working on. And you just need to line them up like this, and you should be focused. And one kind of unique thing about this laser is that it has two different types of lasers built into it, a 20 watt fiber laser and a 20 watt diode laser, which are quite a bit stronger than the ones in the original F1, seeing that the fiber laser in that was 2 watts and the diode laser was 10. And with these two different laser options, it opens you up to a ton of different materials and different types of projects you can work on. And as a great real world example, I actually had to go to a housewarming party the day that I got this all set up, so I was able to make them a custom gift using a design that they actually had on their wedding cake as a topper. And as you can see with this design, I had it do a very light engrave with a full outline. And this way, if they use food on this, it's not going to get stuck in the engraving and be hard to get out when cleaning. Definitely a very easy way to make customized gifts or products. And as you saw, that was done with a blue laser or the diode laser. But if I want to mark on metals, I'm going to use the fiber laser. And you pretty much always want to do a material test. This way you can see exactly what the laser is going to be doing to your materials at what speeds and power. And this piece of metal happens to be a piece of sterling silver. And you can see it does a pretty good job marking on it. Sometimes when doing stuff like this, it does leave a dark residue behind, which you can easily clean up with alcohol. And I normally just use alcohol wipes. And you can see after cleaning it all up, the numbers on here look completely different now. And this same method with the alcohol wipe will clean off most smoke or residue from laser engraving. And with this laser, they did include some materials to try out. And you can see there's quite a few different things here, like this stainless steel piece or this dog tag. There's also these nice stone coasters that have a nice flat surface to them and are actually made out of slate. And if you use the fiber laser on this, you can do some embossed engraving or 3D engraving. But if you're not looking to do full deep engravings, you can always use the diode laser to make markings on it. And it leaves this nice white design on it that isn't going to rub off or anything like that. And this has a decent sized work area with all these threaded holes. And this is pretty much so you can attach a bracket like this one. And this will allow you to put the parts in the same exact spot every time. So if you're doing a bunch of the same thing, it'll always engrave in the same spot. And this machine has a nice work area, but you probably don't want to mess it up too much when you're trying to cut through things. So it does come with this cutting surface that you can put on top of it. It also lets airflow underneath this, allowing your smoke to be sucked out of the area. And of course for this cut, I have it in here the wrong way. 
which still works fine, but you can see that the smoke kind of gets trapped underneath everything. So just make sure that it's in here like this. That way it's easier for the fan to get all the smoke out. It also came with these coated metal business cards, which are always nice to test things out on, along with showing how quick a laser like this can actually do work. You can also see the guidelines for the laser of where the pattern is actually going, which makes lining things up really easy. And this is the laser working in real time, which you can see is pretty quick, especially if you're doing just line work. And just like I showed on the stone piece earlier, you can 3D engrave on metal as well. And there's a few ways of doing this, but how I like to do it is take a 3D file that I want, and then upload it onto this website, which will turn it into a usable image for the laser to work off of. And then you could just download this and load it into the laser software. And in the laser software itself, you do need to change the mode over to embossment. Along with that, the laser software has some built-in AI options, so you can just make these on the fly from pretty much nothing. So in this mode, it's going to do layer by layer based on the colors of the picture and do kind of a 3D engraving. And as you can see, as it's working, it is removing a lot of material from this much thicker aluminum card. And you can see that the exhaust fan was trying to get the stuff out, but it is metal dust, so it is kind of heavy and definitely something you don't want to be breathing in. But here's a finished product and it looks pretty good. And there's definitely a lot of settings that you can adjust to get this exactly how you want it. And of course, this will be different from material to material. And you are able to edit the picture after it's done, so you're not stuck with just this square look, and you can actually make it fit the shape that you're engraving on. And on top of that, I was able to get this to work on a scrap piece of sterling silver, and this will allow you to make some very custom pieces of jewelry. And if you're going to be using this a lot, you're going to be cleaning it out a lot as well, mostly because you want to keep your fan working properly, so you have proper airflow. And this is pretty simple to do. Just remove the four bolts that are holding in your exhaust housing, and this will pull right out, and you can see it already has caked on debris from using the laser. And when doing this, I suggest using some kind of respirator so you're not breathing this stuff in. You're also going to want to remove the fan itself, which will also just pull out and then just unplug it. And to clean everything off, I'm just going to use an alcohol wipe. And there we go, all cleaned up or at least clean enough for me. And then all you have to do is put it back together the way it came out. And make sure to plug it back in and tuck away the wires so they're not going to get hit by the screws or pinched. And then the exhaust housing goes back over that. And then just put all the bolts in and you're good to go. But anyways, back to using the laser. You can also use the fiber laser to clean off rust from your tools or from things that you're going to be working on. Like on this piece of steel that I'm going to be making into a custom texture plate. And this did take a little over an hour to finish, with a total of about six passes. And I was able to roll it through my rolling mill onto this piece of copper with no problem. And you can see that it transfers pretty well. So you'd be able to make just about any pattern you'd like. And if you need them to be deeper in the metal, you just do more passes. And if you really wanted to, you could even make your own custom wax seal stamp. I don't happen to have any wax on hand to show you how this works, but here's an example picture. And it's just something a little extra you can add to packaging to customize it. And the fiber laser also works really well on plastics, which allows you to personalize them or give them a nice professional finished look. And there is actually another way of lining stuff up on here, because this has a built-in camera in it as well, so it can help you line up things or multiple things. But most of the time I just use the framing option. And to start up the laser once you send over the file, all you have to do is push this button right here. And you might have noticed in this video I've been cutting and engraving things without using the protective shield, mostly so you have a better view. But yeah, closing this up will help protect everyone's eyes, and it should do a much better job getting the smoke and fumes out of here. And I've just been using these protective glasses the whole time, that are not in included with the laser. But anyways, one interesting thing you can do with this, if you're making a lot of the same thing over and over again, is the ability to reframe things just by pushing a button on the controller, and by double tapping the green button, it'll restart the same cut. And as you can see, it can come in really handy, but they also have some add-ons that do this same exact thing, like this single keyboard key option, or the foot pedal. But I don't really see these being too useful when the normal controller has this same ability. But I might be missing something, and there might be a useful application for these but I just don't see it right now. But there is another add-on that I can see being extremely helpful, which is this conveyor belt. And this can be used along with the smart camera setup of this machine, so you don't even have to line things up properly, and it'll be able to engrave on everything all at once, and then move it along and continue the process. So it makes doing bulk things even easier and more hands-off. It also pretty much extends your work area from 220 by 220 by 220 by 500 millimeters. This is definitely a major upgrade over the original F1, even though you're going to be sacrificing the portability of this, with its power upgrades, it's just way more usable, and of course being a lot bigger. And with those differences, it also comes with a much higher price tag. As of recording this video, the F1 Ultra is $4,000, which is definitely not cheap. And if you're wanting to get the conveyor belt with it, it's going to be another $400. And if you're wanting their deluxe bundle, you're looking at about $5,200. And in comparison, it definitely makes the original F1 look cheap at only $1,500. 
But yes, they're all pretty expensive. But at the same time, these are all tools that are made to make money, or even start up your own business around them, and not really a hobbyist tool. And honestly, with all of my experience with Xtool products, they're really easy to get set up and running. They also seem to work without any problems for a very long time. And if you do have a problem, their customer service is actually pretty good. But of course, ultimately, it's all going to be up to you, your budget, and what you're doing. But anyways, let me know what you think in the comments below. I also made sure to list all the links to everything I talked about in this video in the description and the first pinned comment. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Other than that, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.